Hey, it's Angie from Block81, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Craft CMS, my go-to content management system for building client websites. All right, so before I get too far into it, I want to say something that may not be super obvious to developers out there, and it's this. There's no such thing as the best CMS. There just isn't. Generally, when developers say CMS X or CMS Y or whatever CMS is the best CMS out there and that's what you should use and forget about all the others, really what they're communicating, sometimes without even realizing it, is that that's the CMS that works for them and their clients and their projects. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing, but it's worked out well for them and that's great. But does that mean it's the best CMS? Not necessarily. So my point in this video is not to try and convince you that Craft CMS is the best CMS out there. In my limited experience as a developer, Craft really is great and it's my favorite, but your mileage may vary and that's totally fine. My point in this video is simply to relay the different features and functionality and whatnot about Craft that make it my favorite and why I choose it so often for building websites for clients. Okay. With that out of the way, let's talk about Craft a little bit. Craft is a content management system built by the team at Pixel and Tonic. Version 1.0 was released back in 2013 and it has been improving by leaps and bounds ever since. At the time of recording this video, Craft is on version 3.7, but version 4.0 is slated to be released in May of this year. So if I had to choose a few words to describe why I love Craft, it would be the following. It's powerful, it's extensible, it's flexible, and it's performant. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper into the specific features that I really love about Craft. Out of the box, Craft comes with 19 field types that you can use to create custom fields and different types of entries within the system. Now this may not sound very impressive, but I will say that just with those 19 field types, you can build a relatively robust website for pretty much any client. Whereas some systems require you to install plugin after plugin after plugin for specific types of fields, Craft just has those built in and that's a big win. As I mentioned earlier, Craft is pretty flexible in my opinion, very flexible actually. But one of the ways that it stands out the most as far as flexibility goes is that it doesn't force you into any sort of development paradigm such as themes. More specifically, it doesn't force you to build your site or code up your site in any specific way. It separates the system from your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Obviously, there are ways to hook those two together so that they actually work together, but it doesn't force you into any sort of theme ecosystem or anything like that. But more importantly, you can configure Craft to work exactly as you need for any project, whether that's a simple blog, a data engine for a, an app, whether that's an iOS app or an actual web app, an e-commerce site, multi-language sites, whatever it may be. Adding to its flexibility, Craft's user management is top-notch. Yes, of course, you can create user groups that have specific permissions for editing content but you can also set permissions on individual users regardless of what group they are a part of. Public user registration is also available out of the box, which makes Craft pretty powerful for even basic membership sites. Now, not every CMS can do this out of the box or maybe not do it very easily, but with Craft, having multiple sites with different domains or multiple languages on a single site is pretty easy to set up and it's rel relatively straightforward and easy for clients to manage. I've done both with Craft and like I said, it was straightforward. For example, one nonprofit client has their main site and 19 chapter sites, each with their own domain. The content for all 20 sites is managed in one single Craft installation. Now with the user permissions that I mentioned earlier, the user groups, different administrators for every one of those chapter sites only has access to their own website. They don't have access to everything. Another client, a government agency, needed their site to be translated into 15 different languages other than English. And that even included one right to left language. Apart from the content being managed in one craft installation, 
All the content in both cases is stored on a per site basis. Better yet, you can pull content from one site to another if you really needed to. Speaking of content, Craft has zero opinion on how you structure it. In fact, with Craft's custom fields, which make use of the 19 field types that I mentioned earlier, all of those are managed centrally. But more importantly, they can be used in different sections and sites across your setup. Craft doesn't care what kind of content it is, text, images, video, it really doesn't matter. You just set it up and organize it the best way to fit your project. One of Craft's killer features is Live Preview. As you're writing or editing content, you can see exactly how it's going to look on any given page simply by clicking on a preview button. Better yet though, the preview updates as you update your content. And this is what makes it one of my favorite features in Craft, because it takes the friction and abstraction of simply entering content into a bunch of different fields away by showing editors and authors exactly how it's going to look. So at the risk of aging myself here, I remember way back in the day when editing a website really meant just using FTP to edit the different files. But these days, as you know, web development's a little bit different and it's critical to be able to have multiple environments, local, staging, and production. Craft's configuration or config makes it ridiculously easy to set things up so that you can work in modern development workflows without breaking URLs. So while it's possible to do this with other systems, it often requires some workarounds that aren't officially supported. But with Craft, it's ridiculously easy to set this up in its config and it is officially supported. They actually built Craft with this in mind. So that way you can work in a modern development workflow without breaking URLs. I don't think Pixel and Tonic have ever touted this on the Craft website as it's likely subjective, but for my money, Craft has incredible authoring and user experiences. For instance, the control panel is just easy to use and it's, in my opinion, quite beautiful. They've also taken the time to show errors in a way that makes sense and doesn't feel like you're trying to learn Greek. Plus, you can somewhat customize the control panel to make it even easier for your clients, especially the ones that aren't tech savvy. And that is a huge win compared to many other systems where the control panel is very rigid and it can cause confusion for many different types of clients. So whether it's free or paid software, good and reliable support is critical. This is no different for the CMS sphere. Craft has several avenues for getting help when you need it. Starting with their documentation, Craft's docs are incredibly well done. They have a full-time technical writer on staff, so that certainly helps. Sometimes you don't necessarily need official support. You just need to know how to approach something. And that's where Craft's knowledge base comes in. It is a wealth of information for those simple how-tos. And of course they have official support. With every Craft Pro license, you get free developer support. With that plan though, you don't get guaranteed response times, but if that's an issue, they do have two additional plans, Pro and Premium at $75 and $750 a month respectively. I currently subscribe to their Pro plan and it has been worth every single penny. There are also other channels such as Discord, a Twitter community, and even GitHub, where you can get help from fellow developers in the Crafted community. Finally, let's talk about plugins. As I alluded to earlier, there is a lot that you can do straight out of the box with Craft. But let's be real. These days, many websites require more than just a few pages of text and images. Additional functionality is needed for SEO, marketing, e-commerce, etc. And that's where plugins come in. Craft has a great plugin store and every plugin is available to try out to see if it's right for your needs. I honestly don't know how many plugins there are, but there are a handful of them that I use on virtually every single craft project. I won't go over them here because that would just make this video longer than I'd like. Instead, I'll go ahead and link them in the description. Okay, so now let's get to the elephant in the room, pricing. No, craft isn't exactly free, sort of. There is a free version called Craft Solo that doesn't cost a dime, but it is limited in certain features and it's really geared toward 
personal sites such as a portfolio. Beyond that, Craft Pro is what you'll want if you're building a craft site for a client. It's $299 per site and includes one year of updates. To be clear, that's sort of a one-time fee. You don't have to pay for anything more after that, but you just won't get any further updates. If you do want further updates after that first year though, it'll cost $59 per year to continue to get those updates. Now, I can hear what some of you are saying or thinking. Why would I pay for a CMS when there are genuinely free options where you don't have to pay a dime, except maybe for the occasional plugin? Honestly, it's a fair question, and I really think it boils down to preference. But I'm also a big believer that you get what you pay for. The team behind Craft is able to provide free support because their product is a paid product. They're also able to focus strictly on Craft because it's a paid product. This is also why Craft gets as many updates as it does throughout a year. And believe me, there are a lot of updates. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you're a professional developer and you think $300 for a CMS plus some plugins seems like a lot, especially if you're actually charging clients, you're probably not charging enough for your work. However, if your client balks at the price of having to pay for software, you know, that's on them and I understand that, but that just means that Craft is probably not the right CMS for them. All right, so that wraps it up. I hope that you got even a little bit of a glimpse at what makes Craft such a neat and special CMS. If you're interested in learning more about Craft, be sure to check out the links in the description and drop a comment if you have any questions or would like to see more videos about Craft. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.